Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we'll be taking a look at how to create destructible meshes in Unreal Engine 5. So let's get started. And if you guys have any questions or suggestions, make sure you guys do join my Discord server. And if you guys do wish to support me, you guys can check out my Patreon as well. So we'll be going through the basics. Now note that destruction is going to be a little bit heavy on your system. So your performance will be quite impacted. Nonetheless, let's get started. Uh, I'll just select a cube. Any random mesh would do. So let's say I have this static mesh uh, chamfer cube here. So I'll just go ahead and press play. Nothing's really going to happen. So the first thing that you'll need to do is just head into fracture mode with your object selected. And over here, click on new. And I'll tell you what this is. So create this geometry collection. Now, a geometric collection is basically kind of, uh, you know, an entity which is going to define how your uh, mesh should disintegrate. For example, if I select uniform, now there are various options which you can select. Obviously, you can explore them. Some of them are self-explanatory, some of them are not. So, if I go ahead and click on uniform, for example, you would notice that you have something like this so you can change the number of divisions so let's say i have 20 by 20 that's the default i assume once you have done that you can go ahead and click on fracture over here so we have the fracture option and now if you increase the explode amount you're going to get the various pieces as simple as that now, if I just go back into selection mode and over here, I'll just uh, go ahead and disable this preview. There is a preview somewhere over here. So I, I guess it's called visualization. Show bone colors. So just disable that. Now, if I go ahead and press play, as you can see, it is breaking, but not to the level I would want it to. Like it's pretty subtle. So you can change a bunch of settings inside this geometry collection as well to impact that. But I'll just show you guys how to actually add in more damage to this. You can use the concept of fields. You can explore what it is for yourself, but I will give you a basic demonstration of how to do that. Now inside your character or wherever you want to, you know, apply damage to the field, I mean the destructible. What you can do is you can just head in here and you can go ahead and spawn an actor of type field. And there are many different types of fields. You can obviously experiment. I'll just spawn the master field and I'll just tell you a few basic parameters. You can always go ahead and click on this browse icon and you can go ahead and open it up and see how stuff's working and all that. But to give you a brief description, uh, you have something known as the activation mode. So you have activation type, sorry. You can go ahead and change this. So I'm going to set the activation type to triggered. So I'm not sure what it is by default. I guess it is. So just look for activation type. So by default, it is set to delay. So I'll just set it to trigger so that it can manually invoke the field. And spawn transform, I'm just going to get the actor transform of myself. So it's always going to be along with the character. By default, I've also noticed that this field is way too small. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and set the sphere radius of the sphere volume collision to something a little bit larger, let's say 100. Now, how do I know I have to do this is if I go ahead and actually check this out, this FS master field or here, this sphere volume collision is what's determining the size of the field. That's how I know that I have to change the size by default. It's 50. It's way too small. So I'm making it 100. Now we can go ahead and set the radial magnitude. So this is going to affect uh the magnitude of our uh, destruction basically i'll just set this to something like 100 and now what i can do is on tick so i'll just write the tick event here whoops so if i just type in tick 
I'm going to get the actor transform again. So I'm going to get a player transform and I'm going to just store this in a variable so that I can access it elsewhere. So I can promote this to a variable and call this one field, let's say. And at this point, what I would be able to do is I would be able to get this field and I will set the actor transform, set the actor transform to the player's transform. And over here, I am also going to trigger it. Let me trigger it on tick. So this is ideally not something you'd want to do, but I'm just giving you a, a demonstration. So I'm going to trigger this on tick and as I go close to it, immediately, as you can see, our box crumbles. Now, how do I know this works? And it's not because of the impact. So I'll just go ahead and increase the radial magnitude. And now if I go ahead and hit it, as you can see, it just kind of pushed away this, the blocks. If I make this, let's say 10,000, it's, it's just going to make all the pieces fly away. So clearly this works. So this is how you would go about uh, applying uh, impact or, or damage to your destructibles. Fields are probably the best way to go. And you can obviously change your logic to work more consistently. So I'll just uh, show you guys one more logic which you can probably use. I don't suggest you use delays, I suggest you use timers. So let's say when you, when you, if you, if you're firing a weapon or something, upon impact you could maybe, you know, spawn a field and trigger it. So we can go ahead and delay it every, I mean, trigger it every 0.2 seconds. And as you can see, it's not really doing much. So you can go ahead and play around with the values and it's going to behave accordingly. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video and learn something new, please make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Goodbye.